This is a free sample of the book, Don't Be Sympathetic, by Cairo Copeland. The first half of this book is posted right here on YouTube, free for everyone to listen to. If you like this content and want to hear or read the rest, or want to listen to it free of ads, visit reinventideal.com slash simp. The book is available on Kindle, paperback, and audible at reinventideal.com slash simp. Chapter 5. Resisting the Urge to Foot the Bill Women are incredibly suspicious of a guy that seeks to protect them and makes it very clear that is what he wants to do. Because what exactly is he going to protect her from? Other men. So to say that she needs protection is to admit that men are a danger to her. What makes this guy the exception? In The Dark Knight, Harvey Dent is referred to as Gotham's White Knight for how he is so pure of heart and eager to do the right thing. But after losing the woman he loves along with half his face, he goes insane becoming the deranged murderer Two-Face. Similarly, White Knights themselves are very Two-Faced. You've seen these guys many times and perhaps have been one yourself at one point. He's the guy that stands up for the woman against other men. He takes her side in an argument, whether in real life or on social media. He cock blocks for the hope that he gets to fill the void created by his cock blocking. He's always ready to rise to the occasion when there's a damsel in distress. This fellow views women as if they are resources. She belongs with me, he may think to himself, and that's entirely the point of his actions. He has no genuine desire to be Captain America for the sake of righteousness and justice. He does it only to make that woman his. It's all about his own personal gain. It is pseudo-heroism and dishonesty masquerading as nobility, all for the hope of getting laid. Quite dishonorable when you think about it. Males have come to believe that this is a legitimate strategy for getting women all because of blue pill conditioning. The fempowerment mandate again, wanting to take advantage of males' nature to serve, pushed messages across the media that you can only get the girl when you save her. The warrior must slay the dragon to get the princess. It's the subplot of every tale since Sleeping Beauty. I remember during a nationwide abortion debate, I forget exactly what sparked it, but a meme went around social media. Only women shared it, and it said something along the lines of, Men standing up for women's rights? We see you, says women. Apparently the idea was to get guys to think they would only get laid if they agreed with political opinions that served women. I even remember OkCupid okay making it a badge you could put on your profile to show that you support Planned Parenthood. The Fempowerment Mandate knows very well how badly males want to get laid and uses that to incite your servitude for its benefit. And sadly, many guys are falling for it. The guy who wrote the article, Stop calling men who respect women simps! is a white knight. An example from my own life, when I was dating this stripper named Sydney. She was a fun person to be dating for sure, but not exactly long-term relationship material. However, having little time to spare for an all-out relationship at the time, I kept dating her because she liked sex and going out dancing as much as I did. However, we did reach an impasse. She started to want a deeper relationship with me, but I was not looking for that, and I was honest with her about it. Further, I went on to tell her that I had no desire to get married nor start a family. She didn't like hearing this news, but she still wanted to be with me. That didn't stop her from wanting more and often push this subject into our conversations, but to no avail. As this frustrated her for a while, she vented about it to some of her friends. One of those friends was an orbiter, a fellow named Marcus. He saw this as an opportunity to try to steal her from me. He would listen to her complaints and tell her that she deserved better than me. He's a jerk and you're too good for him, he'd say. You belong with a man that will give you what you're looking for. He was being a white knight. This type of simp grows from within a male when he thinks to himself, Why is she with such a jerk? I would be so much better for her and would treat her well. Why doesn't she realize there are better men for her? I need to save her. To rescue her from her asshole boyfriend, 
show her more appealing adoration like she's never known, and give her the treatment you fantasize about, would seem like something noble. But there's nothing noble about the White Knight. Deep down, he just wants the woman all for himself, driven by thirst, and destined for failure due to his lack of sexual intelligence, he makes a fool of himself. Their lack of sexual intelligence is apparent because they don't see the true intention of their own actions. A big part of sexual intelligence is self-awareness of not just the urges, but also the actions taken to satisfy those urges. These poor fools think they are doing the girl a service, but the only person they're trying to serve is themselves. You're not impressing her or appealing to her reason by trying to save her. She doesn't use that in her mate selection decision. She is, however, grossed out by how hard you're trying. You're not a hero. You're just a guy using a covert strategy to take a woman from another guy and make her yours. Like sexual theft, where the thief is out to steal because he's too lazy to work and earn. This strategy, however, masquerades itself as earning, which is why so many poor guys fall into doing it. Suppose this ever does work, and your savior behavior results in you getting a woman. The type of woman you'll end up with is the type that always needs saving. Certainly not the quality woman you romanticize about in your head. I say this not to brag, but to make a point. My current girlfriend is a model. You don't get a woman like that through white knighting. What you get is a train wreck drama queen. Case in point, a client of mine had a very creative strategy for his own white knighting. He was a true-to-name Captain Savaho. What this fellow did was call up the women with ads on Backpage, back when they had prostitutes ads. His idea was to call these women and ask them if someone could take them off the market, away from their lives of prostitution, by giving them a good life and providing for them as a loving husband. Sounds so well-intentioned, and if logic ruled the day, one of these prostitutes would think that it's better to belong to one guy that takes care of you than to be a whore on the streets. But my client forgot that these women had sex for money for a good reason. Something about their personality and behaviors made this line of work their only option. These women were often drug addicts, emotionally unstable, or violent types. Not only did they take advantage of him at every turn, asking for money from him every day, probably to go buy drugs, but any time he spent with them where he wasn't giving them money was marred by drama. This poor fellow spent more money on these prostitutes than the prostitutes his clients did, and he didn't even get to have sex with them. He told them that he'd wait until they were ready to do that with him. I imagine their panties being as dry as the desert upon hearing that. He said he'd wait because he respected women. The women you get by saving are needy and dependent on your resources. Quite often, they are always depressed and can't care for themselves. They are the weak-willed type, largely disloyal and easily stolen by other guys. To call them project girlfriends would be an understatement. These women are not just low in sexual market value, they are dangerous. You met them while they were in distress, and this encounter was not by chance. Rather, because their life is a constant state of distress. When you allow them into your life, they bring their problems into your life with them and make them your problems. Fighting off the urge to white knight. Notice how Spider-Man and Batman, despite being superheroes, were never really happy, nor had their lives together. There was always stress and things were constantly going wrong. Spider-Man 2 and the Dark Knight depict this perfectly. When you hold yourself out as the problem-solving savior, the endless supply of problems in the world come looking for you. Therefore, you must not hold yourself out to be a hero. Surround yourself with only high-value people, equal or greater than yourself. Anyone that has issues to dump on you should be immediately dropped and avoided. What you are seeking when looking for people to associate with is stress-free interactions. When you're conversing with someone that constantly complains or has a victimhood mentality, interactions with them are very stressful. There's about nothing you can do to make the conversation positive again. Their defeatist mindset brings you down fast. I myself even turned into a real downer whenever I had a black pill client. The people you want to spend time with are the people who play to win at life. Maybe they have a successful business 
or an enviable career. All that really matters is that they have something in life that really excites them and lights them up when they talk about it, even if it's just a garage band. Further, successful people are often eager and willing to send the elevator back down for others looking to mimic their success. Best of all, they are actually in a position to do that. A successful person did not become successful by putting others down, rather by lifting others up. They don't need help putting out fires they've started because they take personal responsibility and ownership of their lives, even the shitty parts of it. No pessimism or defeatist mindsets. No reward for white knights. Loyalty is not the result of salvation. For the best evidence of this, can you guess what group is the demographic most heavily addicted to pornography? Christian men. This is quite ironic because these guys know and have it regularly preached to them that watching porn is sinful, yet they still do it. They also believe that Jesus Christ has paid for their sins as that is the central doctrine of their religion. They continue to sin despite their belief that Jesus suffered a horrid death because they watched porn. But why do they proceed to offend their Savior with their sins? A similar occurrence exists with people that use government handouts for their welfare. I witnessed this firsthand with my own family. My sister was a moocher and abuser of the food stamp program. She got to eat for free courtesy of the government because she was poor, but often complained about the government not giving her enough money or not letting her buy rich foods and snacks with that money. Here she was getting an important aspect of her existence paid for by someone else, yet ungrateful for it. No one is grateful for things given to them freely. Like a child that gets everything they ever ask for from their parents, they just become spoiled brats. If you save a woman, she will not reward you with love and loyalty. A woman is not attracted by how much you've done for her. To hammer in this point, consider yourself and your own attraction decisions. Not that you really make a decision to be attracted to someone, but review the way you think when you discover you're attracted to someone. Let's use the porn star Ava Adams. When you view a picture or video of her, you don't sit there and think to yourself, hmm, let me think, am I attracted to her? Well, let me consider X and Y and Z. The decision to be attracted to her is made for you by your biology. You find her sexually appealing because the shape of her curves speak to you on a neurological level. It bypasses thought and reason and goes straight for emotion by causing the brain chemicals associated with arousal to arise on their own. Remember how a mix of chemicals in the brain is all it takes to make you feel a certain emotion? The female form has this immediate effect on you before you can even realize it. Because biologically, when you see a woman's body, you see a tool that can be put to use for a purpose. This purpose being solving your reproductive problem. Something that makes all males happy is seeing things come together. That's why we like to work on cars and do construction projects. It's why we like to build things. When you see Miss Adams' body, you see an outlet that can take a plug. Your plug. After all, there's a reason they call the electrical receptacle female and the plug male. Your attraction to Ava Adams exists despite the fact she's done nothing for you but waste time. Solve one problem for this woman you win by white knighting and five more problems will pop up. She will also blame you for her future issues as they arise. Her misfortune, in her mind, is never her fault. This is a person that takes zero responsibility and ownership and has a victimhood mentality. Victims need a villain. That title will soon find its way to you. This is no path to love, harmony, and bliss. Only agony, stress, and endless drama. Also, rage when you watch the woman you've spent so much on run off with the next sucker. 